Good morning. We are at 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verses 5 to 10. Let's read it out and then we'll think about it together this morning. Then the Philistines gathered together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and encamped at Mishmash to the east of beth Avon. When the men of Israel saw that they were in danger, for the people were distressed, then the people hid in caves and thickets in rocks and holes and in pits. And some of the Hebrews crossed over the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was still in Gilgal, and all the people followed him, trembling. Then he waited seven days according to the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So Saul said, Bring a burnt offering and a peace offerings here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Now as it happened, as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering, that Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might greet him. Now, maybe you say to yourself, well, uh, what's going on there? Well, remember, Jonathan had attacked the Philistine garrison, and now they knew there was going to be a fight. Everybody gathers up. The armies are getting together. Saul's army gets together. Now, did you hear those, those numbers? The people are described. They're not even numbered. The Philistines come in as the sand of the sea. They have 6,000 horsemen. And then on top of that, unless there's an issue with the numbers, and sometimes in the Hebrew text, the numbers are a little bit a careful thing, but it says here 30,000 chariots. Uh, where did these Philistines come up with 30,000 chariots? The Hebrew army scatters to the four winds. The people are hiding and disappearing. They're, you know, they're all kind of going on vacation suddenly. And Saul is left. Everybody, whoever's left is trembling because they're totally outmatched. They are totally outnumbered. The military uh, forces against them are enormous compared to what they have and the future looks pretty iffy for God's people. What to, what to learn from this? Well, we haven't gotten to the end of the story yet, so let's let's not draw all the conclusions we, we might draw. But what we can see is that God's people are dramatically outnumbered militarily. Saul is in a bad situation here. Remember, what did the people want? Instead of God to fight their battles for them, they wanted a king to fight the battles for them directly. Well, we'll have a human king like all the nations. And so now Saul is looking sort of, so to speak, down the barrel. But when we look at this, we kind of realize that there are going to be times in our life, in our spiritual experience, where we seem to be outnumbered. It seems like the demons are on every side. It seems like people are being led demonically. People are, who are, people are smarter than we are. They have more resources than we are. They, they, they're bringing whatever. They're bringing lawyers and trouble and, and every kind of trouble. And, and how could we ever prevail and do anything really successful for God? Well, hold on. God is still on his throne. Be careful of the numbers. And I guess that's a lesson we have coming up, a big lesson on that. But here, it looks pretty grim. And the people who were so valiant have now uh, disappeared into the wild. Let's pause and pray. Your Father in heaven, we look, we see with human eyes, we measure, we calculate based on the numbers we see before us. And yet, Lord, you're on your throne. You have big plans for your people. When we realize that today all the big powers uh, that are there, the big, big tech, uh, the big, the big intelligence agencies, every big corporation that is out there, there are just enormous, enormous uh, forces which we know are against us or will ultimately be uh, dramatically against us. There's, there's no way humanly, Lord, we could prevail. We would simply be wiped out, slaughtered, ended. And yet, Lord, you are asking us to be your people. You are on our team. We're, you are our deliverer, our savior. Perhaps we learn better when our resources are fewer rather than more. Set up the circumstances so we can grow and be men and women of faith in you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And you know how they say, be careful what you pray for because you might get it. But I'd rather pray for something that's hard. Hey friend, God be with you and may he bless you in all that you do on this day.